Paul's Journey to Rome, Acts 27 and 28. Paul was a prisoner in Caesarea near Jerusalem. Some of the Jews had accused him of doing wrong, so he wanted to sail to Rome to have his case tried there. Julius, a centurion, was in charge of getting Paul and the other prisoners to Rome. Luke and Aristarchus, Paul's friends, decided to join Paul on the journey. Paul's boat sailed along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. At the port city of Myra, Julius found a grain ship from Egypt that was going to Rome. He transferred his prisoners to that ship. The winds were not favorable for sailing west, so they sailed south. The crew anchored south of the island of Crete, but by now it was winter, a dangerous time to sail. Paul met with the captain, the owner of the ship, and Julius. If we continue this voyage, there will be damage to the ship, a loss of cargo, and possible loss of life, Paul warned. But the owner and captain wanted to sail to a safer harbor. Julius followed their advice. When a south wind blew, the sailors saw their chance to leave. Not long after they set sail, however, the ship was caught in a terrible storm. The sailors could not control the direction of the ship, so they let the ship ride with the wind. The sailors tied ropes around the ship to strengthen it and keep it from falling apart. As the storm continued, the ship was in danger of sinking because of its heavy cargo. The next day, the crew began to lighten the ship by throwing cargo overboard. The third day, they threw out some of the sailing gear. When the storm grew worse, the men could see neither the sun nor the stars, so they did not know where they were or in which direction they were going. Eventually, they gave up hope of surviving the storm. Again, Paul met with the captain, the owner, and Julius. You should have listened to me, Paul said, but cheer up. An angel of God told me that I would arrive at Rome and everyone on board would survive. The ship, however, will be destroyed. I believe what God has said will happen, but first we must run aground on a certain island. At midnight on the 14th night of the storm, the sailors determined they were close to land. They didn't want to crash on any rocks, so they threw four anchors off the back of the boat and waited for morning. Meanwhile, the sailors decided to save themselves. They started to lower the rowboat, pretending to attach anchors to the front of the boat. Paul saw them and told Julius that unless everyone stayed on the boat, they would die. Julius gave the soldiers orders to cut the rope and let the rowboat fall into the sea. Paul promised everyone they would not die. Then he took bread, thanked God for it, and instructed all 276 people on board to eat. In the morning, the crew saw that they were anchored near a bay with a beach. They let go of the anchors and steered the ship toward the bay. But the ship got stuck in the sand, and soon the waves started to break up the back of the ship. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners so they would not escape, but Julius stopped them. Julius told everyone who could to swim toward shore. Then he told those who could not swim to float toward land on pieces of the ship. Everyone did as he said and made it to the island called Malta. Since it was raining, the islanders made a fire so the men from the ship could get warm. As Paul threw some wood on the fire, a poisonous snake bit him on the hand and hung onto him. Paul shook the snake into the fire. The islanders were convinced Paul was a murderer and was being punished. When Paul did not die, they decided he must be some kind of God. But it was actually God's power that kept Paul from dying. Paul and the rest of the prisoners and crew stayed on the island for three months. During that time, Paul healed many of the sick and shared the gospel with the lost. After winter, Paul sailed to Rome where he stayed in his own rented home under a guard's watch. Paul remained faithful to God even though his voyage to Rome was hard. We should remain faithful to God no matter what happens in our lives too, because we know that God is faithful to us and loves us very much.